What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Aces Conference, the podcast. This is Justin. I'm here with my good friend, Tim. He's out of his mind today. And we have a special guest. Melody Curtis is on the line. Booyah. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. Quickest intro hey. ever. <laughs> Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Melanie is our is the Aces Conference mastermind coach, uh, lifestyle expert, parachute wearing, plane jumping, cat loving, life expert. Literally Melanie. knows everything about everything. Uh, <laughs> what's up, Mel? He's reading my bio verbatim. That's exactly what is on <laughs> my website. Please go to confirm that. <laughs> My wife I'm happy read your bio here, guys, for sure. My my wife read your bio last night, and she said eleven thousand jumps. God damn, how is that even possible? And I was like, I don't. It's I don't a lot know. of years, a lot of obsession. Let's call it passion. Let's call it love. Do you Let's do like multiple? A, do you do multiple a day? Yes. You, yes, most. I definitely. couldn't even. Yeah, that's how I'm, math works. I, I'm going to tell a little secret. I'm afraid of heights. Okay. Like, I don't know how you would do, like, I'm afraid to talk to you because I'm afraid of heights. Like, that's how afraid of heights I am. <laughs> is that why I you're not using it. your standing desk today? You're, you're sitting down at it. It, it I... is a little bit. I'm trying to be grounded and hold on. <laughs> <laughs> the standing so desk funny. is too tall. Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, when people talk to me about a fear of heights and skydiving, I, I actually share that I don't personally think it's a fear of heights. It's too high. I think it's actually mm. a fear of death or personal like major injury uh, because you, it's like just so high, you can't usually get a, a sense for that. Like even me, I've never bungee jumped, I've never base jumped, which base jumping is when you're jump, jumping off cliffs and bridges and antenna and stuff like that. That is not for me. It's super high risk to do that. And I'm oddly risk averse to, despite being a professional skydiver. I know the irony of that. But there are ways to engage in our chosen sport with a, a bubble of safety around you. I, uh, I, I tried the indoor skydiving the other day, mm -hmm. and that scared me. But here's the funny thing about this is that, like, my wife and I watch – this is uh, one of our vices. We like to watch the Real World Road Roost Challenge, which is now just called The Challenge. Okay. And then, like, every episode where they're up on a bridge, keep in mind that they clearly are connected by at least three safety wires – they're all like, we're going to die. Like, you're not going to die. You're going to fall. You're going to hang from a wire. You'll be fine. But sky no, I'm with Tim on the skydiving thing. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely not for everyone. I certainly don't even try to recommend it to people. I mean, I would. Anybody who has questions about skydiving, I will happily talk their ear off about it. It's no problem. It's also something that I don't even... I certainly don't think everybody needs to do it. I mean, because this is where my work in skydiving and competition and stuff like that is that the fear part of, uh, you know, anxiety and the fear part of performance is definitely connected to the mortality piece, of course. It's also connected to the performance, social anxiety. It's con connected to lots of different things. And that's how my work in the sport of skydiving and leadership and influence and stuff translates into how I now work as a life coach with people running their own businesses or starting starting up a business or just trying to get through an emotional challenge that they have. I love how you just blended that, how you went from Scott, like how skydiving is making you a better life coach where uh, uh, that's just like, I never even thought about it that way because like, you know, you have a, I mean, you and I have known each other for, for quite some time now. And, um, you know, I know a little bit about, about your history and where you worked and stuff like that. And then to equate that, like, you're jumping out of a plane is what allows you to like understand other people with their businesses. It's just it, it that I think my head just exploded. I think I pulled a Tim. <laughs> I love I that. Tim. I'm making well, your head explode. That's what skydiving does for a lot of people. I like it too, because it was like a seamless thing. She wasn't really, it's not like a Justin where it's like, buy my shit. Instead, <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> buy my shit. I don't feel free to buy my shit. Now we have to put the explicit tag on this episode. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Okay, um, I don't no do that. I did I it on every I episode. I don't force people to buy my stuff. You I don't. Ask, you, I don't. I'm, I ask you, nicely. No, no, I'm saying you don't force people. This is true. Buy my stuff, please. Ask, <laughs> buy my shit, please. please. Like I'm it. just saying yeah. there's, no nice, there's no nice segue. <laughs> Melanie's good. Oh, well, wait, Melanie. This. Have you ever ridden a segue? Yes. Are you fucking kidding me? I, there you go. Nice segue. I did a Segway tour in Berlin and it was so awesome. 
Like no joke. Uh, you think I'm kidding. And I am so not like, it was one of the most fun things I've done while traveling. I yeah. highly recommend it. I, I did one in Austin. It was a hoot. I mean, it's it was just super, like, it's super ridiculous. Okay. Wait, yeah. I think I, I think I can top it for you, Mo. What you do need it. to do next time you're in Berlin is you need to jump out of a plane and land on a Segway and then do the tour. I think you're right. Cut away the main parachute. Then you can just go. And you just go. Super smart. Yeah. Super smart. And then I somewhere along ideas. the line, you like take the parachute, the the suit off and you have like a tuxedo underneath it like a spy movie your creative genius knows no bounds <laughs> I, I needed that today you got that tim no bounds. I, th I think his head just got bigger on the screen <laughs> yeah. zoom doesn't it already fit you anymore it already exploded it came back together and it exploded again this is why we love you melanie yeah well i mean and again just to go back to the seamless transitioning of of my stuff is that in skydiving, I traveled the world doing that work. So I've met thousands of people. So I've engaged with people when they are under stress, when they have goals that they are highly attached to outcome around. I've experienced myself highly attached to outcome. So I've worked through all that and then helped people through those processes, whether it's on a skydiving team and they're wanting to win the national championship or whether it's I'm going to an event at, you know, a big sort of skydiving fun event and the cool kid is talking to me, AKA me, someone who's been hired to be there, someone that is, is elevated in their mind and then wielding that power for good to help people understand about being able to connect with people no matter where we have them elevated in our mind or no matter who or how uncool we think we are, which all of us usually think at some point in our lives, most of the time, all of us, all the time, you know? So like just helping people with that kind of stuff. I've done that a lot and I have the joy and honor as a life coach to really be allowed to hear some of people's real challenges and be a space for them to be seen and heard and be a space for them to explore things that aren't comfortable to explore. So, and we do that with some, like you said, kind of some jokes and some humor, but some real authentic holding of space as well. So I, that's like kind of, I know Ace is like the mastermind doesn't necessarily love me for this, <laughs> but I, I certainly believe in it deeply. I've witnessed it many, many times over the years and it's power to help people. And so I'm psyched that I get to bring that to this group and I'm honored to be a part of that. I think it's great. I think it's great talking to you because every time I talk to you, you're always like, you're always full of energy. You're always laughing. I remember I, I you know, I called you, you and I were having a conversation. This is uh, before last aces. And I was like, I was really, I was really interested in this. And I, and I said to you, I haven't written, I had it written down on my wall for a long time. For, and I said, I said, Melanie, you're always so happy. You love everything. What don't you like? And you just took without like, without even thinking, you were just like oysters. I don't like oysters. <laughs> <laughs> It's so true. They're disgusting. Right? I was like, I did not expect oysters to be your answer, but okay. not and sand. And I wrote it. I wrote it on my wall. Melanie doesn't like oysters. <laughs> and my follow-up question that though, wait, my follow-up question that was, if the Oyster Convention of America or whatever they're called asked you to like come speak at their event, would you do it? And your answer was like an astounding yes, because of I would. because you find the positive in everything, and this is exactly. why we like you. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, that's a skill. That's an emotional skill. If you think that I forever had no uh, issues with being happy or you think I don't have down days, you're sorely mistaken. Everyone's human. Everyone has down days. Everyone has challenges, things that they're working on. And I'm no different. It's definitely, and when people say stuff like that to me, like, oh, you're so happy all the time and sort of it feels sort of potentially fake to people. Mm -hmm. I know that over time, if I'm around that person who originally or initially thinks that, they'll eventually realize it's real. So I, I know, like, I'm willing to play that long game, you know, with anyone and mm -hmm. be cool with someone thinking, <laughs> like, you know, annoying or not legit or whatever. That's okay with me because I, I understand that. And I also share that it's, it's earned. It's fucking earned, man. It's not because I just sat around and was like, I just think I'll, I'll just think life, life is funny now. And now everything's funny. No. Right. Oh, I'll just, you know, 
see that I have some limiting thoughts or self-defeating thoughts of not feeling good enough or not being worthy or feeling socially nervous or whatever, and not then not do anything to work on that stuff. No, like for example, this is a good example. More recently, I did, uh, I started to take dance and I love dancing. I love movement. I love whatever. And I'm usually not socially nervous. I'm usually very outgoing. I love people. I joke that people I, 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 people I don't like, I like because I'm so fascinated by human beings and stuff like that. But for whatever reason, no, no joke, two years, for two years, every Wednesday, I went to the city to a dance class and every single Wednesday, I was totally nervous. <laughs> it, was, it was totally fine. I survived it. But it's like, that is kind of what I, and that's just one version of, of how we have to put ourselves in front of those things that make us uncomfortable, that we are hoping to move through in order to have a life experience or a result that we're after. So it doesn't have to be dancing or being friends with people in this, in a dance class, but it can be something relative to our businesses that we say, oh, I'm not just, I'm not like that or I can't do that, that's not my style. I challenge people who resist with those types of uh, sentences and ask them to really go, mm, you know, and just kind of call people a little bit to the carpet about what they might be able to do if they were willing to do it incrementally over time. Right. It's, uh, it's uh, I, I, uh, I got nothing. It's so just annoying. so good. I know. No, it's, it's so that annoying. It's, it's, it, no, it's not that it's annoying. It's that like, it, you know, uh, we just did an episode on mental health that we, we, we posted a couple of weeks ago. And, uh, you know, I shared some stories and stuff like that. And, and one of the biggest things, especially, and Tim, I, you, you can agree with, because we talked about this in that episode, is that like, as IT people, a lot of IT people are introverted by nature and we're kind of socially awkward, which is why we, we like to interact with the computer because the computer is our friend um, and, and, and things like that. And so to, to, to be able to uh, acknowledge that, right? Which is what you did in the dance. Like for IT people, we need to acknowledge that we need to go see daylight. Yeah. <laughs> like we need to like, right? Sure. Like, like Tim works in his basement. Like when was the last time you left your basement? I, well, this I, morning. Every, I mean, no, every time I see you, you're in the same clothes in the same basement. That's not... You saw me yesterday. I was wearing something different. This is silly, but I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but that, well, yeah, that's like, true, that's right? Nice. But Entrepreneurship it, can be so isolating. It's yes. totally isolating. And it's one of those things we talk about a lot because it, it really is, it's really hard. It's a struggle. And, and we spend, we do spend an inordinate amount of time um, by ourselves. And, and even like last night I was working late, you know, and I'm on the West coast. And so, um, I was also like, I was talking to people, um, like I was talking to, to Michael in Australia for a little bit because, but for me, that's also trying to help from being so isolating because at 10 o'clock, you know, I mean, all I can think is my wife's upstairs. She's probably going to bed. I feel like a shit because I'm not going to bed at the same time as she's going to bed, you know, like you have like that. And I'm trying to fight this, whatever, computer that should be my friend that isn't my friend and is arguing with me and not doing what I want it to do. And, and it just, you know, it is, it's one of these things where you're just like, Oh my God, what, how do we, uh, and now I did a Tim Pearson cause I don't remember what I started talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but well, the isolation. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really isolating. It's, it's a tough challenge. And it's one of the things. So I, I was making, uh, before Justin came on, we were talking, um, Mel and I were, were talking about uh, uh, the stuff and how the podcasts go. And I said something about how like, Justin will try to sell something or he'll sell aces and I will take it in the uh, total opposite <laughs> direction. But what I do want to do is I want to talk about mastermind for just like one second, because yeah. mastermind has been a really good thing for me. Um, and one of the things about mastermind is, um, I, I do believe uh, this is not my theory. Somebody's got the the theory about like you, you surround yourself with the five people that you want to be with. And one of you can probably say this phrase much better than I can, but th that um, 
reflects who you are, right? And when I saw the group of the five people that I was going to be in mastermind group with, I was fucking stoked just for the standpoint of like, these are the guys, these are the people, and I use guys as a general term, but these are the people that I want to be a part of, right? And that like, I think are, are killing it and I want to kill it with them. And if, if, if I can be uh, allowed into their little world and be a little part of, like that was, that was a really a, a, a cool thing for me about mastermind is, is the ability to share with peers on a higher level. It's one of the things I love about the ACES conference is that we're getting all of these people together in rooms um, and talking. Um, and then afterwards, you know, we, go sit at the bar and I can't you're gonna no Melanie you're gonna be there this year right I don't know if you were were you there last no not I was briefly there last year at the end but yeah I'm I'm speaking this year I'm psyched and I'm doing the the lead of the mastermind uh sort of initiation uh in-person sesh as well wait Tim you were so close to finishing that off all you had to do was talk about mastermind and then aces and all you had to say was May 19th and 20th (laughs) 2020 in Atlanta Georgia you would have been done you got you were this close Come join us, everyone. I know. Everybody will be there. And I want to actually, I'm hoping to share a drink with Melanie at one of the events. And I want to, I want to understand what the hell competitive skydiving actually is. Like, how do you score points? You (laughs) dive through a basket. What's the (laughs) thing? Like, I wait, you've never played that like on Nintendo. You got to aim and you got to get through the rings. It's really. Oh, is that what, is there a a literal game like that? There every, yeah, there's, there are. Never played When I was, when I was really, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm old. And so we had like the Atari 2600. And, um, <laughs> when you were 20, you got the Atari 2600. That's all. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> this episode is so off the rails. Yes. Wait, was- Tim, Tim, can I ask you? Wait, Tim, based on how old you are, let me ask you a question just because I need to know the answer. Yes, I saw After Match Live. Now, oh, you beat me to it. I was going to ask if you watched After Match the first time that ever came out as opposed to repeats. Melanie doesn't get this. Melanie, every episode, Melanie, every episode. I don't ep- care. It's okay. Yeah. There's a show called MASH. <laughs> Everybody knows the show it's MASH, right? Yeah. There's a, there's a horrible show after it called After MASH. And every episode, we try to get an After Match joke in because we're That's stupid. hysterical. We, we actually don't try to get an After Match joke in. That's the joke. <laughs> jo- Justin does. It's like, it's like saying meow, right? Yo, it's the meow game. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Just about. to share this because the irony is just, uh, I don't know, whatever connection is, is there today. Right before this podcast, I was on a client call and no joke, I shared the Jim Rohn quote, uh, which is connected to what you were just talking about relative to the mastermind, Tim, which mm-hmm. is uh, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Oh, yeah. And boom like true it's an interesting thought another thought to think about relative to that is if you're the smartest person in the room you're in the wrong room you know so to think about that's the whole later bye that's the whole that's the whole (laughs) (laughs) justin that that's the whole point of masterminding because like And I'm, again, not trying to sell it, but I'm just saying I'm such a believer in it. Like I'm in one myself that is very, it's, I just said this the other day that I was stoked because as someone who facilitates that work, it has been really great for me to find a mastermind that I can be a participant in that is equally exceptionally run. And I'm not trying to be like, I'm so good, but meaning like, I feel really like I'm getting a lot out of that group. And that's, I'm always so glad to hear and know that people are getting a lot out of that group. And I think a huge part of it is the culture of the membership being willing to engage one another, just like what you were talking about, Tim, being like, yeah, I want to be connected to these people. And then you're making an effort to, to be that guy. Right. Yeah. And I think we have that with the earlier class as well. It's not just, you know, like I, I know in this year we have enough people where, because if anyone's listening who's not a, ma- a, a member of the mastermind, just so you're aware, like we do two sessions a month. One session, we bring on a, a, a speaker um, from outside the community to help, you know, learn something new, kind of like continuing ed. And then the second session, we've broken up because we have enough people where we have two accountability, I guess we're calling them accountability classes. Um, I would say it's group coaching. Group coaching. You and know, so Tim's just, in- it involves accountability too sometimes, right. not every time, but yeah. And so Tim's in one class and there's, and there's, another, there, there's another class. And I think in that class, they're just as equally sh- oh. wanting to share as well absolutely um it's just that tim For doesn't sure. get to see that side of it because he's not in it yeah um, yeah it, it's but. sort of like you get out of it what you put into it 
that type of premise as well. Right. Um, and so, I think so it, it's grown a lot since we, since we started it. I mean, originally it was, you know, Kent, when we first started the mastermind uh, uh, three years ago, uh, it was, can you, we started with Marcy Maslow, our, our, our finance person. And it was, can you gr increase your gross income, your, your gross income by $20,000 in a year? And everyone did it in six months. And then the second year was when we had you on for the first time. And we said, can everyone take an extra year's vacation or an extra week's vacation? Extra year. Uh, an extra <laughs> <year>. week. <laughs> that would be amazing, right? Right. Um, an extra week's vacation. And I think everybody know that. And I think this year, we never really set uh, a group goal, but we set personal goals. And I think everyone, I mean, you can correct me that everyone's on pace to hit those goals before uh, ACES 2020, May 19th and 20th. Um, mm -hmm from across the board because we have about nine or ten members right there um which i think is great so yeah i'm killing my goals but that's yeah. just that's just and and one of my goals was <clears throat> to take vacation um and uh i'm going to hawaii next week so awesome where i'll be recording two podcasts <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, this kind of work is, is interesting. Do you guys like doing this kind of work, like recording the podcast? I, I, I love recording. I'm not trying to plug my own stuff, <laughs> but like, I really yeah, we'll enjoy your, it. We'll, get, I feel you, like we'll get to the shameless plugs at the end of it. Yeah. I'm not trying to shamelessly <laughs> plug, but I, I'm genuinely curious. Like for me, it feels like a part of my soul fuel, a, power, a part of, even though it's contributing to my work, and my ability to be out there adding value to the world in the zone that I do that, just like you guys do. This is what, obviously, the, this podcast does that. It adds value to your audiences, your community. Maybe maybe, maybe not this episode. Maybe but. not this episode. <laughs> Thanks a but, lot, uh, guys. <laughs> uh, we, we have a lot of this episode. We, <laughs> no, I, we, we do. I, I have like I, four I, I have like four secret episodes that no one will ever hear because Tim and I have deemed them inappropriate for the entire audience. <laughs> But to, and to your point, yes, I, I like doing this. I like doing this podcast um, for a couple of reasons. One is because, you know, like I, I always say, I'm not the most technical guy in the room, but I do a pretty good job of running a business and I do a pretty good job of running this particular type of business. And I think that there's a lot that I can offer to my peers who give me a lot because they are technical people and they offer me a lot of advice and stuff along the way. And so this is my way I can mildly occasionally give back. Yeah, um, and Would I don't you say know it's a that... labor of love. <laughs> it is a labor of love. Love, yes, of course, yeah. it's a labor of love. Um, I mean, I. I... <laughs> Sorry, Mel. It's a, like a, we have like stupid inside jokes that don't it's get out. It's a total. Jay, Not my again. podcast but... partner. We we. It's totally labor of love for sure. I mean, we have a Patreon yeah. and everything, but it's not. We don't we only do that to have people join our community because we're community yeah. focused. It's right. not meant to be an income generating piece of things. It's just, it's truly because we believe and love our people and want to create a space for them to share, be vulnerable, all those things. Well, and I was listening to your podcast this week and I don't know if it's the current one Thank or you. a previous one, but I was like, Oh, you know, I should, I, anyway. Um, <laughs> Little studying yeah. before our sesh today. Yeah, let's pretend nice. like I actually do that. You know, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, for sure, I do that too. Like, but, let's, uh, if we actually had notes on the people we were talking to as opposed to winging the whole thing. Like, who we are don't you? actually wing. I hate to break it to you, Tim. We don't wing anything. This is all scripted, and our jokes and laughs are <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> there's an totally applause for those scripted. for those who don't for those who aren't going to watch the video. There's an applause sign above my head that goes off exactly when I needed to. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Well, okay. Well, interesting be behind the scenes note. I don't know if you guys maybe see me zip off every once in a while. It's because um, I'm slacking with uh, Adam Rice, who we're, re we're recording after this episode. And he's like, hey, what are we talking about? And I'm like, oh, don't worry. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Just be ready. It's, the, it's the Seinfeld it's, episode. It's, They're all Seinfeld episodes. <laughs> They're all Seinfeld episodes. <laughs> well, what do you guys think would be useful for me to share with the ACEs community? I'm happy to share. Oh, I mean, I'm happy questions. to talk about competitive skydiving, but that's, I mean, you know. oh, I don't know. Well, I was going to just, I was going to ask you about your, the episode that I was listening to, cause you were oh, talking yeah, about sure. friendship. Yeah, cause you were absolutely. talking about friendship a lot. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, I talk about, uh, I talk about friendship a little bit 
Um, and, and I don't know if this ties in or not, because then I was in the car and then Justin probably called me and I probably didn't pay as much attention to it, 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 the, the podcast as I wanted to, but, um, you know, so I, um, I'm an old fella and, <laughs> uh, but my, I, I joke, I, I laugh about this a lot, but I, I think like one of the greatest gifts that, um, has, has come to me in my life is that I met my best friend, um, when I was in my thirties. And I oh. think that that's, I, I think that that's, that doesn't happen very often. I don't think mm-hmm. that that's, you know, like part of what, what, um, how things normally happen. Um, but you were, you were talking about friendship and you were, you, you know, you, you, and you had a lot of great things to say about friendship. And I, I mean, I feel really honored and lucky that, you know, I feel like I'm making friends on a fairly regular basis and, and some real friends. Like I think Justin and I, as much fun as we make of each other, I think that we actually are true friends. Um, you know, we know a lot of, a, a lot, I know it's kind of, it is a little, it. it's a little sad. Yay, yeah. Hard hands. We're probably embarrassed <laughs> to be each other's friends too, but that's okay. Too. <laughs> well, here's but, the truth. Wait, Tim, Tim, Tim. Yeah. Do you keep a picture of me in your wallet? Of course. No. Duh. Was that really trying to do a the Tim silence. invitation? Yeah. The silence is, is, is very out. telling. I have a big picture of Tim on my wall over there. <laughs> I actually legit, these are my, if you are watching the video and you can see me pointing, that is a picture of my two best friends. See, giant, that's awesome. a giant that's awesome. picture of us. That's how I roll. I don't fuck around. That's a picture that's of awesome. Frank Sinatra. That's a picture of Frank Sinatra. Your best friend? My best friend, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> well, Blue Eyes. Me and, me and Blue Eyes used to play Atari 2600 back when after match was a thing. <laughs> Uh, I think I don't know. Is there yeah, sorry, something you wanted to ask Tim? I, I just want to. No, yeah, I'm like, I, if there's a specific question, I'll totally answer it. I don't want to just like run off, you know, go on and on. Does, does Slack count as a friendship? Ooh. Do oh yeah, so good can, question. So can you be, can you be a fr- can you be somebody's friend and like never met them in real life? Yeah, good question. I mean, I think it depends on how you define friendship and what you get. I think there are plenty of different versions of friendship for sure. I think what we would benefit in looking at is looking at all of the sort of different versions that we have, because it's like not every friend is going to become or be a best friend that, and sure. again, however one defines that with depth of sharing or vulnerability or connection or shared memories or number of times a year we visit each other like who knows what the parameters are that one defines friendship as they certainly are across the board um, I would say for all of us but yeah can we have what feels like and is authentic connection via digital medium I would say yes we can for sure Um, and then it's up to the person to say is that enough for me with this particular relationship? Is this enough for me if that's the only kind of relationship I have? You know, so there's that question of how much in-person time do I need with my friends? You know, what what amount of making memories do I want? And it could be not a need, it could be a want, you know, and that's the thing too, as entrepreneurs, it's so easy to feel like we never have time for anything else and to never make the time to make memories or see our friends. And no joke, there are studies that prove friendship is a critical piece of long-term health. Like people die sooner because they have lost touch with their friends. It's like yeah. so intense, but it's, it's that powerful. And people get stuck in that short-term view of, I don't have time, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to do this, or the fear of the client or, whatever outcome might happen, which is valid. I don't mean to invalidate that by saying it. I just more challenge us to not diminish the value of making that time for the people that we love and care about. I mean, there is something to be said, sorry, but there's something to be said, like you could have, like there's friends and you, and you, and you can figure out just how much you need to see them in a year. Yeah. Right like for sure like i mean if tim lives closer it'd be a different story but we live on different coasts but like you know you, you probably have friends that are like i want to see this friend no more than once every six months like i'm still friends with the person yeah like i could only handle them oh. once every six months you know what <laughs> I, I mean have those friends hello yeah. Ross, yeah, exactly. are you listening yes right <laughs> <laughs> once a year it's yeah my two much. best friends don't live near me 
Like they live in, you know, they live not in my town, so I can't see them every day or anything like that. Nor I don't, I don't think I would want that per se with any friend, to be honest, is that I, I, I think that I would, that would be too much for me. I think with I mean, any the funny, person. The funny part about this is you and I live like 20 minutes away from one exactly. another. I see you once a year. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I we're know. good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Maybe I'll see you at the mall. Yeah, perhaps. I never go to the mall. That will never happen. <laughs> There's a conveyor belt sushi in that mall. Oh my god. It's good. But yeah, no, I do. I just to bring it back to the value of that, though. It, it's it's often a piece of the sort of puzzle or pie or whatever that people, you know, don't prioritize at all, mm-hmm. uh, or very little. And I think in my work, I see it as a life coach, I see the impact of that. Well, and and it's, you know, one of, it it reminds me of one of the, one of the conversations that we were having in mastermind about um, that, that haunts Justin to this day. Um, We were talking about uh, something, and I don't even really remember what the the question or the topic was, but we we were talking about like something, you know, that, that you wanted or that, that you really associated with. And Justin, it's when I, I, I was talking about, well, I just want that moment where I'm sitting on the deck with the the wine. Oh, uh, right. The, right. I got the. I have yeah. the glass of wine. I've got the and the kids are running around and you know I'm with my, you know my best friend and, and our wives and we're just it's that that moment of zen that we're looking for, you know and yeah um, for sure. And that's Justin, another piece found of your, self- Have you found your moment of zen yet? Me? Yeah. Yeah. Have you no. found that thing? Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, and I that mean, was, you have that to was... experience it, but do you even like know what you're shooting for? Uh, no, I don't. And that's, I mean, that was with the thing, right? Because after you said that, I remember like you and I talked offline and I was like, kind of jelly of, you know, that first off, I don't drink wine, but I would in that scenario. And then like, <laughs> you know, to sit and just watch. I think, I think the closest thing I've, I've gotten to that was... Um, this past summer, you know, when the kids were off from school, we took a, we took a road trip down to, um, Ocean City, Maryland, and we found this like really awesome apartment and the bed, the master bedroom patio door faced the beach. Now I don't like sand, but I love the sound of the ocean. So my, I'm going to mute that. My Alexa can do it for me all the time. And so, uh, sitting on the balcony, I mean, I was not going to Coke, but whatever, watching, <laughs> some like car thing on Netflix, listening to the ocean. Like I was, that was probably as close. That was the closest I could ever say that I've, I, I've been to Tim Pearson. <laughs> <laughs> That's the closest I've ever been to being Tim. Is sitting on a balcony. Over, on opposite coasts. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm, yeah, that, that moment is an, that thing that we all try to strive for. Uh, and it I mean, varies. Melanie, you and I have had this conversation. It varies about. as we grow as people too. Like for example, at the earlier part of my career, when I was full on in the professional skydiving mode and I was maybe really young life coach or whatever, maybe not even life coaching yet, but I spent a lot of my time and energy and resources on my craft and my community. So, and I mean that, and I mean the skydiving community and the people, and then, and then as I grew the entrepreneurial community, And then as is often with most people, you have these midlife crises or these mushroom clouds that hit your life. Like, so my life kind of radically changed. I got divorced. It was a big life change. And as a part of that, it, this realization was happening before my, you know, like mushroom cloud as it were, but what I realized for myself was I realized a deficit in my own happiness, feeling really disconnected from my family. And I had just simply been unconsciously really driven by positive energy and love for skydiving and my goals in that arena. And I've achieved great success in that arena as a result of that. But then when I came upon a sort of breakdown in my life and my sort of identity, trying to figure out who do I want to be, going forward. Who am I? What am I doing? The fuck? You know, when I, you have those moments and you, I really was like, I've been saying this for years that I want to see my family more and I never do it. And I, I had to call myself out. And so over the last say five years, I've been really making a point of doing that. And it's not that I see my family all the time, but I make an effort to be there for the holidays I want to be there for. I visit my parents in Florida, even though I don't like Florida. 
know what I mean? <laughs> like, I love I, Florida. I'll go visit your parents. I'm there all the time. If yeah. you follow me on Facebook, you, I'm stuck you know, in Fort Lauderdale Airport every other month. There you go. But you know, for reals though, I go to my niece's shows that I can go to. I, I do, I, I brought legit intention to that because it was, I, I really finally acknowledged it as a key piece of why I was unhappy why also, I wasn't balanced. So anyway, I acknowledge that you guys, and that was a piece of my sitting on the, on the porch with whatever, the way that you described your moment, like that was a yeah. part of my moment, you know? Well, you, you also said something interesting when you, you described um, family holidays, you said the ones that I want to go to. <laughs> yeah. <There's>, I mean, <laughs> which is, consciousness which, and intention. And, and that, I think that's a great thing. That's a great point because you have to, you do have to like own it and be like, you know what? this is too much of a shit show. I'm not going to go to this particular event. And, and and you have to own it to your family too. And that's... Well, and it's not even that my family is a shit show necessarily on any holiday. Some, a lot of families are, um, you know, and I, and I don't really feel uh, that. My Honestly, no joke. And I'm not saying this just because my family might listen to this. Like it, they're genuinely just pretty chill. But wait, another what? piece was I wanted to be home more. I traveled so much sure. for so many years, you guys. Mm -hmm. I feel wildly at home in a Delta Sky Club. Like there's something <laughs> fucking wrong with that. You know what I mean? Not that there mm -hmm. is, but you know what I mean? And so I wanted to be home more. And so I had to then say, okay, I just because I can go to every holiday with my family now that I live in the Northeast again, I can choose also to stay home and make sure the balance for me is what's right for me. You, you talked about that you didn't want to, in case your parents are listening to this, will, <laughs> will your mom re-share this if you post it on Facebook and write- Oh, you are so morning, ridiculous. Curtis? May 19th and 20th. <laughs> my mom will, my, no, that's not what I'm saying. My mom will re-share it and be like from the desk of Justin Escar. That's so, mom my mom re totally re-shares my, my stuff. My yeah. mom is the best. She uses the wow uh, emotion reaction a lot for my stuff, which I always Okay, so appreciate. a wow for Melanie's mom. Yay. <laughs> yes. um, so I got a question for you. Uh, uh, now that you've been, you know, teaching the mastermind, you're getting to know more and more and more of the ACES community and, you're, and uh, we're bringing your IT skills a little higher. I could ask you any of the three letter acronyms to see if you know them. Um, what do you think is one of the biggest things that entrepreneurs, but especially the IT entrepreneurs, the, the ACES community should be trying to do if they're not already like in, whether it's engaging in others or if it's more outbound communication to bring up their mental awareness or be acknowledging more, like what do you think something, having seen a bunch of them, and this is a broad stroke. Yeah, broad stroke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And this applies to everybody, not just, uh, you know, uh, my, my initial thought is usually the initial thought I have for most of us uh, is that if we are not already sort of growth minded people, AKA we aren't of the mindset that we can change our circumstances or change how we think or change our level of happiness or engagement in life and bit, whatever whatever kind of state of mindset that we're in, I would first have people look at opportunities to engage in a growth experience, whether it's a mastermind, whether it's therapy, whether it's a life coach, whether it's a, you know, freaking Tony Robbins weekend, which I've never done, but whatever, like just, you know, growth, something that elevates people's thinking that gets them to think differently and have an experience of a like seismic mental breakthrough. So those experiences are out there and they're available through lots of different modalities and opportunities. The reason I say that is because we get, all, and this is again, all of us, we get so in our routines and it's so easy going back to the isolation. It's so easy to just stay in our comfort zone. And so I think probably for a lot of IT people, I would guess is definitely around the realm of relationships and the friendship stuff that we were talking about before, the real human connection. I would guess that there's a deficit of that. And I can say, even for me as a life coach, talking to people on Zoom and talking to people on the phone and being in that role, I have a lot of human connection, but I 
too had to make real effort to make friends where I live and make a point to go out to have a freaking juice with somebody. You know what I mean? Like, and just make a point to be in person with, with more people that has really helped me. So anyway, that's kind of what I would say. There's lots of other things though. So do you think Justin should join a dance class? Yeah, fuck yeah. Dude, I know how to I, I dance, yo. Yeah, let's be, let's go, let's start a hip hop dance troupe. I'm into it. It's one of my life goals. <laughs> uh, I was quoting do, Jay-Z last night. Does that I can do the W for Wayne. <laughs> yes, I'm um, in. You were quoting Jay-Z to me last night. That's so funny that we're talking about that. Um, all right. So we can round this up. Uh, all right, yeah. Mel, where, where can people find you online? What do you want to shamelessly plug? Yeah, uh, people can find me at melaniecurtis.com. So that's my website. Uh, you can drop me an email directly anytime. That's mel at melaniecurtis.com. My podcast is trustthejourney.today. So yeah, there's whatever. Hit me up. Happy to share lots of stuff. Anytime. And you're in Thank the you guys. And, and and you're in the Aces Slack as at Melanie Curtis, I think. So anyone can yeah. find you in our Slack. Yeah, and every now please. and then you respond, which is nice. Um, anything else you wanna you wanna any parting words you wanna give to to the people? Uh, gratitude. Thank you for, guys so much for oh, having me. Gratitude. Thank you for your trust to work with me in the way that you do in the ways that you do. And to everybody everybody listening, just you know, thanks for being here and. Yeah, gratitude. Oh, my heart's a little a flutter from all that. <laughs> uh, well, if you like listening to Melanie Curtis, you can see her live May 19th and 20th uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. She'll be there. She's speaking this year. Yeah. Do we figure out what your topic is? No, not yet. I'm, I'm devising right. my plan. Oh, it'll be good. And then be good. you also, and we're going to do a live mastermind uh, session at the end of day two for all of the, uh, for all of the attendees and anyone else who wants to join and check it out. Um, get your tickets now at acesconf.com. Tim, you got anything else you want to say to the folks at home before we leave? You know, I'm just happy to be here. I, this, this was a fun talk. I hope that people got something out of it. I, I love talking to Melanie and you know, uh, I, this was just a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of fun. And, uh, hi mom. I, I'm sorry. I said <laughs> bad things about Christmas, but, <laughs> but I, I, I'm happy that you're one of our 74 listeners. That's so Moving awesome. on up. All right, yeah. well, that's it for us. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you soon. Get ready for the Tim and Justin show. All right. We're gonna, oh, we are recording. No, Fuck. We are recording. Yeah, so now you have to edit. This is what I like to do because Justin doesn't want to edit, so I'll start doing it, and then he's got to, like, eh. I think you should I say include take this, it. Right? Well, and include I think you should, it. like, you should do the cool thing where you take a tidbit from the middle of the episode and put it at the intro and then have some fancy music.